Okay, chapter 11, show you know. This is a review from grade 7. Your first question says Ellen flips a coin and rolls a four-sided die numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. What is, a, what is the sample space? And you use a tree diagram to show how you got your answer. So a sample space basically means what are all the possible combinations. This means what are all the possible combinations. So when we're talking about a sample space, that's what we mean. We mean, can you write out all of the different combinations? Now, what this is asking us to do is create a tree diagram to get that all the combinations. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the first event. And that first event will be the coin. Okay. Now, if you flip the coin, you have two possibilities, obviously. Now, you have more than two because you could land on its edge. But technically, you have either a heads or a tails as the combinations for that first event. Now, if that first event was heads, the second event, which is the dice, has three, four combinations. You can either go a one, a two, a three, or a four. Same thing with the tails. If you flip the tails, that second dice throw could be a one, a two, a three, or a four. So in order for us to get our sample space, we have to look at the end of each branch of this tree diagram. If I look here, this would be a heads one, a heads two, a heads three, and a heads four. Those would represent flipping a head, rolling a one, flipping a head, rolling a two. So in our sample space, if we wanted to draw it all over again, you could go H1, H2, H3, and H4. Those are four possible combinations. Over here, we have tails one, tails two, tails three, and tails four. So those are four more possible outcomes in our sample space. So once we look at our sample space, those are all the possible combinations that we can write. There's eight of them, okay? So the second question, B, says, what is the P bracket H comma 4 question mark? This is a fancy way of saying probability of heads and 4. That's what this whole thing says. So if we go back up to our sample space and we circle all the heads 4, there's just 1. So the probability as a fraction is there's 1 chance out of 8. This 1 represents what we call favorable outcomes. What it is we're looking for? In this case, this is called the favorable outcome, the H4. That's what we're looking for. And the bottom number is what we call our possible outcomes. So the probability of something happening is the favorable outcomes divided by the possible outcomes, or that is a fraction. If I change 1 out of 8 to a decimal, I get that, which is also, since we know our percentages, that's 12.5 uh, hundredths, or 1,125 thousandths, which is 12.5%. So the probability in this particular question of Ellen flipping uh, a coin and landing on heads and rolling a 4 is roughly 12.5%. Okay, in the second show you know, on the second side, it says a spinner is divided into four equal regions, uh, shown as above. You spin the spinner and you roll a standard six-sided dice on once each once. Create a table this time, not a tree diagram, but a table to show the sample space. Now, tables are used when there are two events only. If you have three events, you can't use a table. If you have three events, like rolling a dice, spinning a spinner, and flipping a coin, that would be three events, you would have to use a tree diagram to illustrate the outcomes. But for two, you can use a table. So here's how you make it, just like this. Now down this side, we're going to call this event one. And this is going to be the spinner. 
And over here, we're going to put event 2. And this is going to be the dice. So for the spinner, we have a 1. We have a 2. We have a 3. And we have a 4. And for our dice, we have a 1. We have a 2. We have a 3. We have a 4. We have a 5. And we have a 6. All right. So for our uh, table, what's nice about this is that all of this space in here, everything inside there is actually all of our possible outcomes. And it actually is our sample space. Because everything inside there would be all the combinations that are possible for the dice and the spinner. If we look here, this is a 1 on the dice and a 1 on the spinner. So inside here, we would have 1-1. One, one. That would represent... Uh, rolling a one and spinning a one. This would be a one on the spinner, a two on the dice, a one on the spinner, a three, a one and four, one five and one six, one being the spinner, six being the dice. Okay. The next one would be two, one, two, 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 three, and so on. So through the miracle of pausing, I have filled in the table. And everything in red is your sample space. So if we think about this, this is our sample space. I could rewrite it again if I wanted to, but I won't bother because we see clearly that there are 24 possible outcomes. So there are 24 possible outcomes. Okay. In question B, it says, what is the probability of a 4-4? So when I go to my 4-4, it's right there. That is the only one out of all 24 combinations that is a 4-4. So my favorable outcome is one chance out of 24. One divided by 24 is a decimal. So one divided by 24, change it to a decimal, is 0 0.0416 repeating. Or as a percentage, approximately 4.2%. Uh, so the probability of spinning a 4 and rolling a 4 is about 4.2%, or 95.8% of the time you're not going to do that, right? So the probability of that happening is not great. The second part, what is the probability, this is question C, of a sum being greater than 5? So if we look at these combinations, right here, this one here is actually 1 plus 4, which is 5, but that's not greater. So we have to circle all of the combinations in this table that have a sum when you add the two numbers together that is greater than 5. And all of the green ones that are circled have a sum that is greater than uh, 5. So we have 5, 10, we have 14 favorable outcomes out of 24, which has a decimal. 14 divided by 24 equals... 0 0.583 repeating, or approximately 58.3% chance. So what is the probability of having a sum that's greater than 5? More, more often than not, the sum of those two uh, events is going to be greater than 5.